Welcome to the Autosportradio.com 2021 show. I'm your host, Don Kay. We are coming to you from the Grant King Ray Shops at 8155 Crawfordsville Road in Indianapolis. Uh, today's show is presented by Honda and Honda HPD, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the NTT IndyCar Series, SVRA, McGilvery's Pub and Eatery and Speedway, and VP Insurance. Quick reminder, if you're looking for memorabilia for a friend or a kid, or a fan that you know, check out the500shop.com. If they haven't got it, it doesn't exist. So check it out, the500shop.com. The uh, book by uh, SVRA Vice President Mark Dill is out. It is a phenomenal book. I just finished it. It is really good. If you haven't gotten a copy, you can get it most anywhere, Walmart, Target, most anywhere that sells books, you'll find it. Barnes & Noble, Amazon. So check it out. It's the legend of the first super speedway, the battle for the soul of American auto racing. It's a great book. Get a copy. And if you have one and you're out the speedway, Mark will be in town next week. So uh, maybe get him to sign it. Also, it's out now the book by Paul Page. It's entitled, Hello, I'm Paul Page. It's race day in Indianapolis. There is some at the uh, gift shop and at the speedway museum. So if you get one and you'll see uh, Paul around the speedway, have him sign it for you. It's a great book. Very interesting. Uh, I've only seen uh, the highlights of it. I haven't read the book yet myself, but if you get a chance to get it, you got to know stories from Paul Page. You got to be good. Uh, is it time for a dental appointment? Well, I recommend the best, the Indy Dental Group. Indy 500 veteran Dr. Jack Miller and his wife, Dr. Liz Lewis, have a spectacular practice. You love the people they have there. The techs are excellent, out of this world. If you need a dental appointment, you haven't had one in a while, I highly recommend you give it a shot. Everybody else has, and they say, wow. Number 317-846-6125. And the computer doctor is now has an office. It's located at 5549 Fleming Street. It's on West Washington, right off of Washington Street, but it's a Fleming Street address. So check it out or give them a call at number 317-328-0766. If he can't uh, bring your computer to the shop, he'll make a house call. So give him a call. That's Steve Freeze. He is the computer doctor. I'm honored today to have a very special guest. He is the 51st governor of the state of Indiana. And of course, it's the Honorable Eric Holcomb. And governor, I can't thank you enough for taking the time because I got to think you're, you've got, besides running a state, you've got other problems to contend with. So you're very busy. <laughs> it's good to be back with you, Don. You, Your backdrop looks like we've classed it up since the last time we got together. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start off. You are from originally from Indianapolis. You graduated from Pike High School. Yep. You attended uh, Hanover College. Um, since getting out of school, you've been given two honorary doctorate degrees. So, uh, you know, you have had the education. When you were coming up, did you want to get into government? Was it your intention <laughs> to get into government? No. Uh, the running joke in my family is, if I didn't look like my father, you'd wonder where I, you know, who I came from. And <laughs> no one in our family um, has ever served in office. Um, certainly do a lot of volunteering. So maybe that's where the, where I got the bug serving others. And uh, whether it was in school and different clubs or organizations, or then in the United States Navy, I've just kind of always listened to an inner voice that um, was trying to serve a cause greater than whatever I was about at that time too. Well, you, you, you certainly did well. You had six years in the Navy, which is where I was. I spent four years in uncle Sam's canoe club. And <laughs> the only thing I'm sorry about is I didn't stay. I wish I'd wish I'd have stayed for 20, but you probably learned a lot there. of army jokes. Yeah. <laughs> I have a lot of uh, uh, Marine jokes. Yes. I Marine I. Birthday, I always go because I said, you know what, you ever look at your check, it says department of the Navy. So I had to keep an All eye. Right. On it. Um, you, how did you become highest ranked enough to become a Lieutenant governor? I mean, were you surprised at that one? Well, I guess I was, uh, just had been out and about, I served, um, on the staff for, um, governor Pence's predecessor, governor Mitch Daniels. And I worked for Mitch for 10 years. So I was, in the neighborhood, you might say, and paying paying attention. I wasn't sleeping at the switch, and 
Uh, got around the state, all 92 counties, knew a, a lot of the different stakeholders in rural, urban, and suburban counties. So, you know, always, always uh, knew what made the state tick. And then one thing just led to another. And you either say, you know, so often in life, you come to a fork in the road and you got to pick which direction you want to go. Um, and I, I picked the route that led to the desk upstairs. Well, certainly a good choice. And I got to think you got tutored by somebody that knows how to run things, how to, you know, put the bank book where it should be, the budget where it should be. And you have, um, uh, Governor Pence did the same thing and they handed it to you and you have done in a terrible situation. You have kept the state afloat. I don't recall seeing a check coming from the taxpayers of America to, to bail Indiana out of trouble. Right. That's um, right. You know, it, it's it's interesting. The, the you know the job that you have as a governor. Um, everything comes to you one way or another. And I, I also want to mention, you said you have been to all ninety-two counties. You also have sunk a basket, a basketball basket, in every ninety-two county in the state of Indiana. That's right. Were you? Did you play basketball in college? Not in college. No. I. I uh, Went to Pike High School, as you said, and uh, the coach there said that I couldn't jump over a dime <laughs> and uh, was told by someone that I would never play in the NBA. So maybe I hung it up early, um, but uh, had a lot of fun. Grew up playing basketball, you know, in, in the backyard and built a full court here at the governor's residence, played <laughs> on some Navy teams. <laughs> uh, abroad and down in Florida, played on a team and then played in Lisbon, Portugal. I was stationed in Lisbon, Portugal for three years and played on the NATO team there. So certainly did it just for fun, though. Wasn't, wasn't getting paid or on scholarship. Um, is the governorship, of course, you had a tutelage on your way up, but is there anything that surprised you as a governor of the state of Indiana? When you look around, you got to say to yourself, Phew, we don't have this problem. We don't have that problem. Or if you do, you solve it before it comes a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Probably the biggest surprise to me was, and, and, you know, I'm not complaining about this because I like getting out and about, as I said, all 92 counties, not once or twice or three times, but over and over and over again, I learned so much when I'm not in the state house. Um, but, you know, with that comes a loss of your, anonymity comes a loss of you might even say privacy so everything you do if you're chewing with your mouth open someone's taking a picture of it and <laughs> you could get embarrassed real fast so uh you know that that's a big difference and something maybe that i saw working for mitch for eight years when he was governor um i mean i saw that but i was one step you know removed from it and I, and I didn't take it everywhere I went. And so when you sit on one side of the desk, it's a lot different than the other. The other thing that I like to do is stay very accessible. And um, I like to return phone calls and, and uh, just the sheer volume of good that's going on um, makes it critically important, just like a pit crew that you have a great staff. And so um, I've been surprised that we've been able to attract the best very high caliber, you know, team and, and keep them for, because, you know, as you alluded to at the outset, we've been through some unprecedented times and we've tried to keep calm and carry on, so to speak, and keep our wits about us. And, um, but, you know, it's a grind on, on folks that you work with. And, you know, for the most part, we got a pretty good batting average. You know, you, you say that you like to return phone calls and like to communicate and be available to the public. But when you've had what you've had to deal with in 2020, I got to think probably 99 out of 100 calls were from a health department and consulting yeah. with them constantly because yeah. everything changed. And you listen to yeah. some of the people that are telling you you need to do this. And the two days later, they say, no, you don't need to do that. You need to walk on your hands. I mean, it's just been crazy to keep up with. But you seem to have done it and, and yes. the state, although it suffered, certainly not as bad as a lot. Yeah, we, I mean, it, it's not to me rocket science or brain surgery. I've never attempted either, but I mean, <laughs> I got to imagine if you just, we, we've always tried to be fact focused and data driven. And it, quite honestly, this is not a stretch, but you know this better than anybody. You go into a pit crew and you look at all the monitors that they're looking at for every 
you know, tenth of a second, and it matters, and you make adjustments accordingly. And there may be the smallest change on the rearview mirror on a race car, you know, from one year to the next. Maybe it's even controversial when they do it. Yeah. Uh, but it makes a huge difference. And so just imagine all those monitors um, during a race. Well, we were in a race to save lives and we were looking at whether it was public health or public safety, um, getting getting folks outdoors safely, getting folks vaccinated, getting the logistics the scale of that whole endeavor of, you know, our Indiana National Guard, men and women all over the state of Indiana and long-term care centers and delivering masks and gowns to hospitals. I mean, one day led to the next. Each was different, unrelenting. But what kept us calm and confident, quite frankly, even during the worst of the storm, was that we were looking at facts. And we were not only playing defense, but we were taking the fight to COVID-19 itself. And so we started playing offense as well. And, you know, you could, in, in a sporting analogy, you get, you, you get a little swagger about you and you start doing things right. You feed off each other. Um, and I think that's been the secret to our success was the team, the plan, and the execution based on science, data, and the facts on the ground as they were, like them or not. Well, it sounds to me like you were too busy. You, you would not have had time to write a book. No, <laughs> not uh, even a coloring book. Yeah. <laughs> now you keep alluding to sports. I know you're a huge sports fan. <laughs> and uh, I assume that you probably are a, a huge Pacer fan, uh, the Colts fan, you know, the Indiana You Fever. want to talk about Billy Keller? I will. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There, there's something you could talk about for a long time. Go back as far as you want. But, uh, you know, it's, I'm amazed that this, the professional series have been able to sustain themselves with, you know, 2,000 people. You brought in the uh, NCAA March Madness, and it, the entire thing was played here in Indianapolis, and there wasn't enough people in the stands to uh, warrant putting a popcorn machine in because there wasn't enough people there. How did that work out, and how did you, you know, arrange to make it happen? Yeah. Well, it didn't start or stop with me. Uh, it was a we uh, endeavor. And when the when Mark Emmert at the NCAA approached us, I, I didn't think it was if we should do it. It was here's how we do it. And we needed to make sure that we were able to provide the resources to pull it off. We had the courage to do it. Um, but it was now realistically – can we accommodate in this um, new normal or this new reality? According to the facts on the ground, the answer was an easy yes. And uh, it didn't mean that the days were easy, but coming to Indianapolis and not any, I think it was only in Indiana could it happen. Not San Antonio, not Los Angeles, not New York, but for very um, specific reasons, our volunteer base, critically important. The headquarters was here. They had a long history of trust with us. We had a good track record throughout the pandemic um, and, and our response rates in terms of PPE, et cetera. So we were able to deliver up front on everything that they needed to pull it off over time. And, you know, I'll tell you the most relieved individual I ever saw that whole, and I took in multiple games, by the way. Uh, was the chief right. medical officer on that last game because, you know, he was on pins and needles every single morning, noon and night, just hoping that, you know, the, the, the floor wouldn't fall out from underneath him. And one case would lead to 20 to 400 and it never did. And so uh, only in Indiana could you pull off something of that scale. And we got such good praise around the world, quite frankly, uh, but it's what we do. This is, you know, we're a, we're a sports crazed state and we host events, play events. We've got it all here. Uh, we're going to see another biggest, you know, sporting event in, in the world on the 30th of May. And, and we'll prove it once again. Well, it's kind of interesting when you talk about the greatest spectacle in racing, the biggest event in the world, even at a 40% um, capacity, <laughs> it will still be the biggest single day event in the world Yeah. at that. Right. Now, among everything else that you deal with, you have time to look over and 
a, a good friend of yours, maybe he's not a good friend, he just gets in a lot of pictures, uh, Dr. Mark Utzler. Um, his wife, you, you appointed her to a, a physical therapy board and she has been nominated, trying to match his three with a nomination for the Sagamore of the Wabash. So that's just one little teeny, teeny thing that you have to look at and comes to your desk. But I, so, you know, I got to think with something like that and taking the time to uh, assess people and appoint them to various uh, organizations or groups or you know, the, how do you find the time? I mean, there's only 24 hours in a day, and I know you don't work 20, but probably sometimes you do. But to well, get... I don't miss any meals, and I sleep at night. I mean, I'm <laughs> I feel fairly liberated to make the decisions because I'm equipped with the data and the information. And so, um, once I'm presented the information to make decisions, whether it be trustees at universities, different boards. You know, there's about 3,000 of these appointments to, to make. Um, you just you schedule the time and you become disciplined about it. And I take it all seriously down to that last position, um, whether it's the egg board or the Purdue trustee, um, <laughs> because it's a it's a reflection of not just who we are as a state and and how we operate. But that person touches a lot of lives whether it's the trustee of Purdue or on literally there is an egg board in the state oh, of geez. Indiana. And, uh, but that person, you know, in the dairy world, in the egg world, they're very important because they're oh. making policy. They're helping make policy and, uh, you know, overseeing the regulatory regime of whatever industry. And so you just have to make time. And, and fortunately I got no excuse, Don. I mean, I, I saw the job before I applied for it. And so I knew uh, what you had to put into it. And I saw the work ethic of my two predecessors and thought I could live up to it. Well, let's get down to the real McCoy here. Indiana <laughs> and Indianapolis are without a question, probably the best host in the country for a myriad of events of any kind. You can handle you know, thousands of people in. You've got the hotels and motels and restaurants and so forth to handle it. And the Indianapolis 500 is back 40%, but that'll bring in a lot of people in the motels and hotels, which I got to think, you know, if you don't get calls from the hotel owners and managers saying, thank you, sir, yeah, exactly. I'm quite surprised, yeah, but yeah. They, they have survived. What, what is the meaning of the Indianapolis 500, Indianapolis Motor Speedway to the state of Indiana and to the city of Indianapolis? Well, I mean, it means everything to us, to not just to our past and where we are today, to our to our future um, as well. It's part of our heritage, um, our proud heritage. It's it's uh, where so many of us grew up. So it's part of our psyche. Um, I, I went out to the Grand Prix Saturday um, and stood out front of the pagoda after the race was over with a buddy and we ended up talking to people from italy illinois cambridge city a family of five from cambridge city and i said are you coming back for the race and they said oh yeah we'll be back here five times before the race but we're coming to the race too so to your point i mean it's a huge economic has a huge economic impact on our state but really it's part of our spirit and our soul um, as Hoosiers. It's one of our greatest exports. When, wherever I go in the world, it's part of this job. Everyone knows. When you think about a couple of years ago, I made the statement that the last five winners of the Indianapolis 500 were from five different continents. So it's, it's a global sport anyway. We just have, happen to host it here every single year and it's on a scale like some world cup that moves from country to country we host it every single year and then when you talk about the ecosystem and all the different types of racing whether it be grand prix or endurance or you name it open wheel drags out in brownsburg um sprint cars dirt tracks all over our state it really is uh we got something for everyone and uh and and then you throw in there just kind of the star power, the teams, the owners, the drivers, 
um, it's, it's exhilarating and exciting. And, and I'm just, um, feel fortunate, uh, to have been born in Indiana and come home to Indiana because of, because of the racing. Well, I've been here 28 years. I don't know if I qualify as a Hoosier yet, but, uh, but I love it and, and I'm here till I you dig a hole in the ground or whatever it is they're going to do with me. Um, you know, it, it's interesting that uh, how important Indianapolis is to everything. I mean, they have trade shows here. They have FAA conventions. They have all kinds of things. And when I tell people, you know, here's what they really, why in Indianapolis? I said, for Pete's sake, it's a crossroads of America. You can get to Indianapolis from anywhere on an interstate, right. most likely. That's right. And yeah, it's, it's a good place to fly into. They got a great airport as well. So, um, do you get uh, involved at all and get all worked up over the 500 any more than you would for, say, <clears throat> the Pacer? Well, that's that'd be like <laughs> choosing between your children, I guess, basketball <laughs> and racing. Um, I, I get worked up because it's, you know, we always say, hooray, it's May. Uh, and, and there's so many things that lead up to the actual race and you can just start at, you know, the green flag and work your way back to 30 minutes before the race, I think is some of the best 30 minutes of the year, every single year, just the patriotic display, uh, just makes you proud to be an American, uh, makes you thankful that we have men and women in uniform that sign up to do things that most would rather not, um, and, and then you go back to carb day and you go back to, you know, crowning the princess and you go back to the parade downtown and you go and you, so it's, it's really truly a festival of events that leads up to this greatest spectacle in racing. And that, and that draws you in. And oftentimes, as you know, over 28 plus years, I mean, oftentimes it's the last 30 seconds that determines um, the winner. And so you you really are drawn in. That, that also, that's not even going to the, all the incredible people watching out there in the infield that you get to see um, on like no other day. So uh, it, it's just a great day. Obviously, I started out as a young kid on the west side, Claremont area, and, and we would have family Memorial Day neighborhood picnic. So I was, as a young guy, listening to it on the radio. And you remember the names, announcers, you know, the songs just on a radio in a garage. And our, our Memorial Day picnics would go from one family one year to the next family the next year to the next family. But the common denominator, I guess, was the potato salad, fried chicken, magic cookie bars, and the race. <laughs> now, did uh, your high school, your, your longtime boyhood friend, uh, uh, join you for listening to race, Tim Sindrick? Not in the garage. He was always in a different garage. He was always out here. Um, I, I lived uh, through through it all with him um, growing up for sure. And, you know, as kids, we would actually play with his AFX cars on his shag carpet that he hated. <laughs> uh, but uh, but his dad, Carl, who worked on engines and Goodyear and, you know, throughout the years, who's since passed, um, he said, Mr. Penske paid for that carpet. It's going to stay. So <laughs> case closed. Um, but yeah, we grew, we grew up certainly talking about racing and, and he was kind of wired and, you know, destined to go that on that track as well and, and done very well. I'm very proud of Tim. Yeah. Well, I, I wonder if you two ever get together. He says, I'm president of Penske and I'm president of uh, team Penske. And you say, no, I'm governor of state of Indiana. Ha ha ha. <laughs> no, you know, he was a really good ball player too. Uh, he did play college ball. He played at Rose Holman and, um, you know, we've always been close. Um, and, and you might say he's got an important job or you might say, you know, I've got an important job, but we never take ourselves too importantly <laughs> to this day. And when we get together, Don, we laugh more than we laugh like we're in sixth grade. And it's nothing, I mean, we haven't changed. Tim's always been a really hard worker. He was the guy you did not want to guard because he just played harder than everybody else. I'm not saying he threw cheap shots or elbows, but he might have. <laughs> um, but but he, could, he could get at it. 
and whether it was studying or on the court or off the court, um, he's earned everything he's achieved. And um, like I said, I'm just I'm just proud to know him, and I'll always be there to help him personally. And any times I think about, you know, on the basketball court or the track, but on the basketball court, more than playing, you were growing up together and you were talking, whether it's you're playing horse or, or pig, you know, at the, on, on the driveway, you're talking to each other as just buddies. And from whether you're in sixth grade or senior in high school or today, like, you know, we have a court at the house and um, I'll see him soon and, and we'll probably end up shooting a couple shots. And I hope he, I hope he rolls an ankle when I beat him. <laughs> Well, you know, it, it, it's interesting to me how somebody like yourself growing up in Claremont and so on and so forth, and you end up the governor of the state. And again, I say, in my opinion, in a lot of people's opinion, obviously, because you got reelected, you're doing a, a stellar job of keeping the state liquid, it's, it's functioning, you know, things are going on that you might, a lot of other states say, well, we haven't got the budget for it. Well, they right. do now because the taxpayers gave it to them, but. You know, it's interesting. And then you have the uh, the ominous duty of picking a winner of the Sagamore on the Wabash. Yeah. And the young lady that I know that's nominated, I know there's a number of nominations, but uh, Teresa Utzler is, is one of your nominees. And I, I think that would be kind of neat to have her. She probably built it. He'd build her a wall for her thing. His three can be in the corner. Hers would be front and center. <laughs> and she's also representing physical therapy in Washington. I think there's some uh, delegation that's going from around the country and she is going there as well. So she she brings a lot to the table, 30 some years of volunteering for the uh, festival. Uh, th there's interesting people that get behind what goes on in Indiana. The, the, that's it. When people come in here, they say, you know, they're really friendly here. I said, yeah, I told you that. They'd let me in. I'm still here. They haven't thrown me out yet. So they got to be pretty <laughs> friendly. Let's face it. Yeah. Well, Governor, I, I, I know you've got other things to do, but I certainly appreciate you taking the time. Once again, this is the second time you've been a guest on Autosport, the first one live and in color at McGilvery's and Speedway. This one, unfortunately, by Zoom, but it is what it is. You've done it. I appreciate uh, Sam Fain for making it happen. And uh, so, and Ethan for helping me out. So I thank you for your time and look forward. Maybe I'll see you wandering about. Of course, you'll have your entourage around you. Be kind of, you're, you're taller than most of them. So I'll probably yeah. see you. I'll, I'll be goofy and I'll stick out and um, I'll be wearing black and white. There you go. Well, thank you for your time, Governor. Thank you for the job that, that you're doing for the state of Indiana. And I hope it continues. And I, I, I probably would be remiss if you got your eyes on anything else above the governorship, senator? Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> Call my wife. I'll give you her number. <laughs> okay. The state of Indiana is enough for you, huh? Absolutely. More right. than enough. Well, thanks for the job you're doing, and thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Thanks, Don. My guest has been the 51st governor of the state of Indiana, the Honorable Eric Holcomb. He has done a great job, and uh, hope he continues. We have a, a couple more guests to be lined up, but it will be a few days before we get to them since there's activity at the Speedway. So until the next time, Dante saying thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. See you next.